Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to take one man's junk and see if we can turn it into my treasure. Stick around. I was plundering around my local thrift shop recently and came across this. This is the Acer Aspire 1 ZG5. This computer came out in 2008. It sported a whopping 512 megs of DDR2 RAM, and it's running on an Intel Atom processor at 1.66 gigahertz. It's got a 16 by 9 aspect ratio on a TFT display with a screen resolution of 1024 by 600. It's got three USB ports, SD storage ports, and yes, it can run Linux. The original hard drive was only 8 gigs. I used one of these back in 2010, I want to say, to do homework on. Well, I saw this and I thought, I wonder if I can rebuild this. I got it for a pretty good deal because, as you can see, everything is just coming out of it. Luckily, they had the screws here. I'm going to see if we can put this back together, and I'm going to install Linux on it. So this is the state that I got this computer in. It was literally falling apart. You can see all the wires are here and all the connectors are in place, but nothing was together. Thankfully, they still had all the screws there. So I will be able to put this back together as it stands. Now, this computer came with 512 megabytes of RAM, which is desperately not enough. It wasn't even enough at the time. So, I'm going to upgrade it with as much DDR2 RAM as I could find. Uh, very sad, 512 megs of RAM. Let's take that out. And that's as simple as that. This is your, <laughs> this is the cooling for it. Got VGA out, USB, Ethernet, SD card reader, hard drive caddy. They're going to put in this micron 128 gig ssd to do that i need to take this off this is literally the only tool we're going to be working with today it's just a, a screwdriver a phillips head screwdriver that i can magnetize that's going to go on that way so this has to go on this way simple enough the fun part here is going to be digging through to see if I have the right screws here for the hard drive and it doesn't look like I do so I'm gonna have to stop here and go find some all right so after doing some digging around I found two screws that will work so we just put the hard drive back in screw that down there we just need to flip the unit back around. Make sure our wires and cabling are out of the way. Now, you can kind of see right here, whoever was working on this didn't even bother to put the screws back in for the monitor. We're going to do that now. 
And I have no idea if I'm using the right screws for any of this. It's just what was in the bag. On the other side, we've got our microphone, speaker, two more USBs, card reader, some sort of card reader over here. Careful, right here, the switch I think for the Wi Fi. For these, we just tack everything down. Fun part is going to be putting this back together, putting the keyboard back on because we've got two connectors here, one here and one here for the trackpad and the keyboard that have to go on these two slots here. And that's going to be fun maneuvering that back in place. Trying to hash out where these go on the fly here. Because we've got four screws along here that are going to be shorter than the rest. Making sure that I've got those separated. And it looks like we might have two more short ones go here so one two three four five total short ones it looks like the rest go for the mobile all right so i'm not trying to make this perfect i'm just trying to hold all the pieces in place so we are going to now try to connect the top part of the keyboard do that get it lined up and i'll try to make it to where you guys can see but Basically, I have to pull these two cables and connect them to these two spots. Actually, you know what? This particular keyboard... ...releases up. Here making everything accessible. It's a lot easier. So now just have to gotta get this video cable right to that little hinge right there. It's inside the hinge. There we go. Ah, and I see where I was messing up before, and take some screws out. That makes that a whole lot easier. Got our trackpad cable. remember when all these were all the rage because they were so ultra portable and now we've got phones that are way way more powerful than this thing is now some screws in there then just a matter of getting this Look back in. And then you just kind of press that back down. Now, flip it over. And we've got some more case screws. And again, I'm not trying to make this perfect. You can run. A lot of different versions of Linux on here. I'm going to try 
to install Mint. Let's see how that works. But if that doesn't work, then there's versions like Puppy and all sorts of other stuff that's out there. All right, that looks like about the limit of the screws that I can put in. So there's our battery, which I'll be shocked if this battery is any good. Got power. All right, so I'm back. I had to download a 32-bit torrent of Mint Linux to be able to run on this. Mint 19.3. And let's see what this error is all about. All right, so we're going to boot up from the thumb drive, pressing F12. And instead of just starting Mint Linux, we're going to start in compatibility mode because this is such an old device. Now, this will take a while, so I may speed this portion up. You can see we have a mouse and a desktop. That was a good solid minute and a half, but we are booting from this thumb drive here. So, and then from there, all we have to do, let me check here. This battery is probably trash. We're going to click install. This is about as fast as this netbook is ever, ever going to run. Um, it's got a solid state in there. About the only thing I could do would be put a M.2 with an adapter in there, but then you're still relying on the Atom processor. And we may speed this process up as well because I think this is going to take a while. A good sign when the Wi Fi drivers are automatically detected. We are going to install third party software. And for this demonstration purpose, we're just going to erase this disk, whatever was in here, and click install. Time zone is correct. And we'll just call this Acer. Just give it a really generic password. And there you go. So we'll speed this up and we'll come back when it's finished.
Well, on first boot, it looks like about two minutes from power on to a usable desktop. But there you have it. Mint Linux 32-bit running on an Acer Aspire 1 that was originally designed to run Windows XP. So for a net cost of $10, $30 if I want to buy a new battery for it, I have a completely functional netbook that I can take around with me and use and not worry if it gets destroyed. Now, this makes this machine completely functional and working here in 2022. Is it the fastest thing in the world? Not by far, but it is a usable, workable computer. And my total cost, what with having the extra parts lying around here, was $10. $10 for a functioning computer in 2022. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video as much as I have making it. If you did, feel free to share this video with your friends. I thank you for watching. Have a great day.